Hey, today we're going to talk about oceans and water distribution. Now there are five oceans on Earth. They are the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Southern Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. If you take a minute or so to look at the globe or the map provided and kind of get an idea of where those oceans are located. Now, what's in our ocean's water? Well, guess what? It's salty. If you haven't had a chance to see it or taste it, yes, it's salty. And yeah, it's not drinkable. In fact, drinking too much of it would certainly dehydrate you. Now, salinity is what we use to describe saltiness in this case, and it represents the total amount of dissolved salt in a sample of water. Now, Table salt, or sodium chloride, represented by the chemical formula MANACL, is the most common salt. You can kind of see that on the pie chart that I have to the right um, that is combined with uh, sodium and chlorine. The red being sodium, 30.6%, and chlorine being 55%, roughly. So they make up the most combination of our water. Now, the percent of salt present in the ocean altogether is roughly about 3.5%. Now, let's look at Earth's water as a whole. Now, the oceans cover 71% of Earth's surface. That's roughly about three-fourths, probably a little bit less if you're being specific, but 71% is still a large majority. Now, the land takes up a mere 29% of Earth's surface, or about one-fourth. Now, how much of the Earth is covered by each of the following? When we're breaking it down into salt water, ice, and fresh water. Now, this is kind of an area of concern, and a, there's a reason I'm bringing this up, but I need you to understand that we only have 2.5% of ice and fresh water. Now, that's important because that's the normal everyday water that you and I use to drink, take baths, shower, wash our cars, water our lawns, etc. And we only have about 2.5% of this. Now, less of that 1% of that, of that 2.5% rather, is actually accessible. So that means that we have even less than 2.5% that's available because much of it, unfortunately, is trapped in glaciers. Now, the remaining 96.5% is salt water. Yes, the yucky stuff that you're unable to drink. Now, the 0.65% or the lower than 1% of available fresh water that we actually use is found in lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, or in underground reservoirs. Now, let's talk about accessible drinking water. About 2.15% of fresh water is frozen in ice caps and glaciers. And the Great Lakes represent the largest fresh water source in the United States area. A large portion of the water that we actually drink is groundwater, and it's located underground, like wells and so forth. Now, there are factors that affect the amount of salt that's in the ocean water. Um, density actually increases as the amount of salt or salinity increases. So the more salt there is, the more dense something is. The less salt, the less dense. Ideally, in the best drinking water that we have, it would have very low salinity and a very low density value of approximately one. A freezing point of water tends to actually be affected when you add salt. And when you do add salt, it actually decreases the, uh, uh, the actual freezing point of water. And so uh, the freezing point of water decreases as the amount of salt increases. The more salt you have, the lower the freezing point. So salt water has a lower freezing point than regular water, drinking water. Now, to recap what's in the ocean's water, we already talked about salinity, and it represents the total amount of dissolved salt in a sample of water. But let's give it a perspective. On average, one kilogram of ocean water contains about 35 grams. Now, one kilogram is about 1,000 grams. And of that 1,000 grams, you have about 35 grams of salt. 
So that's not a lot of of water, and that's a lot of salt. And trust me, if you tasted it, you would know. Now, um, there are temperature variations. The sun warms the ocean water at the surface, and the surface temperatures are warmer near the equator and lower as we move away from the equator. Deeper in the ocean, the temperature tends to decrease, and the cold water is denser than warm water. Now that completes our presentation on the oceans.